Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Planning and Strategic Initiative, Initiatives Committee meeting. Um, we have no consent items or discussion items, so we'll jump right into the meeting. Um, this is a formal public meeting to consider applications under the Planning Act. If a person or public body does not make oral or written presentations to the City of Kitchener before the proposed applications are considered, the person or public body may not be entitled to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal and may not be added as a party to a hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal. So the first item is regarding um, an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment for 1157 and 1175 Weber Street East. And we'll start with the presentation by Mr. Brian Bateman. Um, senior planner of the city, and you have five minutes to make your presentation. Oh. Okay, it didn't move. Okay. Sorry. Good evening, Madam Chair. There we go. That sounds better. Committee members, staff, and residents. My name is Brian Bateman and I am the Senior Planner with the City of Kitchener and I am pleased to be bringing forward a planning report for committee's consideration recommending approval of, the, of an OPA ZBA for a mixed-use development located at 1157 and 1175 Weber Street, the uh, former uh, Crosby dealership site. Site context. The uh, subject property is, is outlined and read, as you can see from the aerial photograph. It's a corner property. It's located right at the corner of Franklin Street and Weber Street um, in the Stanley Park neighborhood. And as you can see, there's a very distinct line separating the commercial corridor from the low-rise residential uh, area uh, to the opposite side of uh, Weber Street East. Um, there is a uh, grocery store on, across the street um, on the Franklin uh, frontage and it backs on to Shoppers Drug Mart, beer store, and it also uh, backs on to the, uh, the Highway 8, um, on Highway 8. Conceptual site plan. So um, I don't know if you can see it really well here. I won't get into a, a lot of details as the uh, consultant will will go over it in detail. But the uh, the area outlined in white and and black um, is a four-story podium um, that surrounds the entire site, as you can see. And then on top of that podium, there are two towers. Uh, there is a 17-story tower closest to Weber Street and a 19-story tower closest to uh, Franklin Street. Uh, there is uh, commercial, um, commercial uses at grade along uh, Weber Street, along with amenity space and some residential. And the parking is con contained in a structured parking, both underground, their surface, and in structured. And there are two access points. The main one is off of Franklin Street and a secondary one off of Weber Street. Here's what the building will, will, will look at looking from the uh, Weber Street location. And you can see quite well the, the podium um, and the two towers that are located on top. Quite a nice building. I think it's going to be a great addition to this, this location along this corridor. There are, with the four-story podium, there are active uses as grade. With the two two-point towers, there's 443 units, along with 307 parking spaces. The proposed land use, the official plan, um, it currently is designated commercial in the city's OP, and they're proposing to designate it mixed use with a special policy 63, and really the, the, the designation and the special policy is, is to recognize a floor space ratio of 4.5 and heights of uh, uh, 17 and 19 stories for the towers. And this is the uh, map five that goes with the OP. It's really just to show the special policy area in the official plan. 
The proposed zoning bylaw, it is under our new bylaw 2019-051. The existing zoning is commercial two. The proposed zoning is mix three with site specific regulation provision 364 and holding provision 44H. And there are really three key aspects to the zoning. One again is to, is to, um, is to recognize or to allow for a floor space ratio of 4.5. Secondly, for heights of 17 and 19 stories and a parking ratio of 0.7 spaces per unit. And the holding provision is for the detailed noise study and a record of site condition that the region has requested. Opportunity. This is a comprehensive mixed use development on underutilized lands within the Weber Street East Corridor. It will add 443 one, two and three bedroom units to the city's inventory and uh, it will contribute to the diversity of housing in the, in, the, in the neighborhood and help support and contribute to the Weber Street commercial corridor. It's transit supportive uh, through the increased density. There are major bus routes uh, located on both Franklin and Weber Street. It also has uh, transportation demand management, management measures. There's storage for 423 Class A bike spaces. That's a lot. And the design is compatible and context sensitive. So in conclusion, I'm recommending approval of the, OP, the OPA and ZBA uh, from commercial to mixed use for the reasons stated in there and that in my opinion, this demonstrates good planning and is consistent with provincial regional and city planning policies. Thank you very much and I'd be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Okay, I think we'll hold questions till after the next delegation. Um, thank you for your presentation. And next we, up we have Ms. Beresdale. <clears throat> and um, Zach Zare is also, but from Zare Group is also available to answer any questions that may arise. Whenever you're ready. Uh, good evening. My name is Kristen Barrisdale from GSP Group, and as uh, Chair Chapman noted, Zach Zare is here from Zare Development to answer any questions you may have with regards to the building um, and the proposed development. Uh, they are in partnership with the current property owner, MKG Holdings Corporation. So this is just a brief context picture. I won't spend too long on it. Brian, Mr. Bateman's done a great job explaining uh, where the site is in relation to surrounding uses. As he's touched on, um, there's quite an extensive range of commercial uses uh, to the east along Weber Street, as well as a small um, the grocery store to the west of the site. Um, you can see on the attached map that there is also a range of smaller green space uses surrounding the site. Uh, and then the low rise residential uses are just just beyond that existing commercial corridor. Uh, the site has existing Grand River Transit services along both Weber Street and Fergus Street. Um, I noted the community slash open space uses, so that includes Idlewood Park, Sunnyside School and Prospect Park. Uh, in addition, the site is very easily accessible to Highway 8 and then beyond that to Highway 401. Again, as Mr. Bateman touched on, this is uh, the, site plan up, the site plan concept for the proposed development. It includes two towers with a total of 40, 443 dwelling units. As Mr. Bateman touched on, it's a combination of one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units. On the bottom left side of the building, you'll see the 19-story tower um, closest to Highway 8 and away from the residential development or furthest away from the residential development on the north side of Weber. And on the right-hand top of the building, you'll see a 17-story tower. There are commercial slash non-residential uses proposed along the Weber Street frontage. And as Mr. Bateman touched on, the parking is provided through a combination of surface parking as well as one level of underground and podium parking. I did want to bring your attention on this slide. There are 38 parking spaces that are located at the rear of the proposed building. Uh, those spaces are located within the MTO standard setback. Unfortunately, we are not able to count those spaces towards our regulatory requirement in terms of zoning, um, but they are allowed to be used by the proposed development and tenants until we're told otherwise by MTO. As Mr. Bateman showed you, this is an example, or sorry, a, a rendering of the proposed development as if you were facing Weber Street, ground floor commercial along the frontage or the bottom level, and then what you see above, uh, stories two through four are residential units that actually front onto Weber Street. 
Uh, the tower in the forefront, so on the left-hand side of the screen, the Weber Street frontage also includes the lobby entrance to that proposed development. And then this is the elevation as if you were on Franklin Street. Um, so again, you'll see a slight wrapping of the commercial uses around the uh, bottom of the podium. Levels two through four include residential dwellings that face the street, and then the 17-story tower atop that. Uh, Mr. Bateman included this in his presentation. This was a brief uh, landscape concept that was submitted to the city to demonstrate how the ground level could be designed. Um, you can see that there are planter boxes and plantings, uh, shrubs, etc., provided along Weber Street. The frontage along Weber Street is quite narrow because of a road widening that's required by the region. However, there is a much wider um, frontage that's provided along Franklin Street that does lend itself to the planting of street trees. I should also note that um, each of the units has balconies, so they also have private outdoor amenity space. Um, as part of the proposed development, this attached um, rooftop concept was prepared and submitted. It includes approximately 1,300 square meters of outdoor amenity space, so it includes an artificial turf area that's intended to accommodate a small activity area or play area for children and tots sitting areas, meeting areas um, that include furniture and amenities, and then soft scaped landscaped areas that would include raised planter beds, small trees, shrubs, and planting areas. Uh, I, these are precedent images that were included as part of the urban design brief, although we haven't got into the fine details of what the rooftop terrace will look like. Um, these are images that are kind of being used to guide the overall design. So what you'll see on the top right and left are some of those seating areas, hardscaped and softscaped areas, so including planting beds. And then what you see on the bottom right and left, left-hand side is the small dog area for residents, and bottom right is a, an idea or intent of what the outdoor turf slash activity area for small children could look like. Uh, these are renderings that have been provided. So on the left-hand side is if you were standing at the corner of Franklin and Weber looking east onto Weber. And on the right-hand side, it's more of a street-level uh, rendering of the proposed development is if you were standing at the intersection of Franklin and Weber. Uh, this is a great image to articulate um, the uh, ground floor commercial slash non-residential uses uh, as well as the lobby and then again you see above that are residential uses each with their own private balcony. As Mr. Bateman touched on, the proposed official plan amendment uh, is redesignating the property from commercial to mixed use, as well as establishing its site-specific policy area um, to permit a maximum floor space ratio of 4.5 and a maximum building height of 19 stories. And then the zoning bylaw amendment is to change from general commercial to mixed use with a number of site-specific permissions. It includes a minimum non-residential floor area requirement of 376 square meters. My mistake, this should read a maximum of hazard of 4.5, not 4.0. A maximum building height of 19 stories. As Mr. Bateman touched on, a, a, a significant increase in the minimum Class A bike stalls per unit requirement and a reduction in the overall parking spaces, vehicular parking spaces per unit. The site-specific provision will also prohibit the use or establishment of geothermal wells, and it will include a holding provision until such time as a detailed noise study and record of site condition were prepared. Uh, through the neighborhood meeting, we heard a few comments and concerns from residents, and I'm just going to take a brief minute or two to summarize those. So uh, firstly was uh, building height and massing. The initial concept as presented to uh, the neighborhood was a five-story podium. That's been lowered to two, uh, four stories, excuse me. And we maintain the strategic location of the tower, so the tallest tower being stepped back from the residential uses. Number two, traffic volumes and movement along Weber Street. This portion of Weber Street is a regional road, which is intended to accommodate a high volume of traffic. Access for the site has been intentionally split to two different driveways in an attempt to lessen that. So there is one driveway access on Weber and one full movement access on Franklin. Parking, um, as we noted, there are existing Grand River Transit services along Weber and Franklin Street. In addition, the proposed development will accommodate the construction of two new shelters um, for future uh, uh, transit. Uh, there's one being provided along Weber Street and one that's being provided along Franklin. Uh, four, uh, lack of park space in the community. Um, there has been significant on-site amenity space programmed and planned for the development, including the rooftop terrace and ground level gardening, um, as well as, as I noted, those private balconies that each resident will have. 
And finally, population and density. As Mr. Bateman touched on, this area has seen quite a transition over the past couple of years. You can currently see the construction of the Elevate condo um, on Ferguson Weber, Hush Developments, which was a medium density stacked townhouse and small apartment building development. And then as Council is aware, you recently uh, approved um, 146 Fergus Street that's providing for a small scale apartment building, or, or sorry, mid-rise. So that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions as well as Zach is here to answer any questions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just wondering, of, of all the parking sp spaces, will there be any uh, with uh, charging uh, options available? <laughs> Uh, so definitely, we've got the current plans have at least 63 EV ready stations, uh, likely through or uh, following code, new code requirements. As of right, with the demand of these charging stations or the amount of electric, electric vehicles these days, we will look to push that likely, um, just based on what we're seeing at our towers at Garvin Street and Charlie West, as an example. Okay, that's great to hear. And at the appropriate time, I'd like to move this. Next, we have Councillor Deneau. Thank you, Chair Chapman. Um, I, I, my ward abuts right to uh, to Mr. Schneider's ward, and I think it's a great location. Um, that little corner has kind of just been desolate uh, as long as I've lived in, in Kitchener. For me, it used to be a KFC, now it's a, a um, dealership. My only concern is, and I'm reading the the uh, reports about uh, the traffic, um, and so in this on page 18, it talks about. Um, it's not proposing that ac an access onto Weber Street, but rather from Franklin Street. So is there an access off and on of, of a Weber or not? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, there is two access points. There is a full movement access being provided off of Weber and a full movement access being provided off of Franklin Street. Okay. So <laughs> I work in that area and, and the Weber doesn't bother me. I, 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 I do question um, the Franklin Street. Um, off and on, I, that is significantly backed up. Um, whether you're turning left onto Franklin or you're turning left onto Kingsway from Franklin, um, and so uh, yeah, that's that's my only concern in that area. I really, I think it's it's great for that that community. Um, but uh, if if I want to make a note, that's that's my concern. I don't think that's a, uh, yeah, I just don't think it's it's not impactful as as this has led to a belief. And, uh, if I may, through uh, Madam Chair, through you, uh, so this was uh, quite um, thoroughly detailed by both the region and the MTO, actually, um, because of the uh, proposed development and that driveway, and how it interfaces with their setback requirements. There was quite a comprehensive, thorough review from the MTO. There was some back and forth to ensure that we're making sure that that access was located outside of their no-touch zone, but also sufficiently set back from Weber Street, um, because the region also has requirements with regards to setbacks to intersection. So it's undoubtedly busy. There's no denying that. But the access that's been proposed off of Franklin is the optimized access in accordance with the MTO standards as well as the region standards. And yeah. And I and I understand that. I think sometimes, you know, uh, when uh, uh, people are looking at, at the plans who are not living in that area, it's easy to make it. It's easy to make a determination. Well, that's not going to be a great impact. But if you live or work in the area, that affects you. It doesn't affect the person from Toronto or, or from from the region, right? So um, I just want to make a note of that. And my last question is: Is there going to be a, wall, a noise wall installed um, to the back? of the building that's kind of looking overlooking the expressway? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, no, there is no proposed, proposed noise wall. Um, the project has been developed or designed such that the podium on the backside facing Highway 8 is actually parking, structured parking. So that in itself acts as a noise, noise barrier to the residential unit. So the first four levels are actually parking at the rear. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Johnston. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Chapman. And uh, thank you so much for, uh, for bringing in this proposal today. My question is something that uh, the neighbors have brought up as well, and that, that's around the park space and the amenities there. Um, we know that uh, a lot of young people now have dogs, and so there's a, there's a dog park area. Wasn't sure quite 
how big um, that was, as well as the amenities for, for playground and that. So I'm wondering if you can comment on that, please. Uh, sure, so through you, Madam Chair. Um, the, the reality is we're in the early stages of how the detailed design of what the rooftop podium is going to look like. But I can tell you through our experience at Garmin Street and Charlie West specifically, and it's obviously basically brand new completed buildings, we are seeing that on a daily basis. The amount of young people living there with animals is more than I definitely thought there was going to be or suspected. And then obviously the young families that are moving into some of these buildings is also quite high too. So I think as we work through this process at the site plan level, all that experience from Charlie West and Garmin Street will be used here to ensure that this building is uh, you know, well thought through in terms of those type of amenities. Um, because we really are seeing that on a daily basis live at yeah. those towers as we've now turned those over to the end users. So. Okay, that's good. I, I am happy to hear that. I am the uh, parent of two millennials and all of them <laughs> have dogs. They, they really do and that's, but that's just a small sample. <laughs> but I'm happy to hear that, that you're noticing that, that as well. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're kind of taking your history from your other buildings and, and looking at it that way because that was going to be my next question is the concern about, you know, it's all nice when everything goes in brand new, but after it's used for a while, um, you know, what, what are you finding with, the, with those types of amenities after they've been used for a while? Well, I guess to be fair, at Charlie West, specifically in Garment Street Condos, they are still relatively new, mm -hmm. even in people occupying the buildings. This will technically be the first summer that Garment Street Condos is actually utilized from the uh, outdoor terrace standpoint because of when occupancy was granted last year. I think at the end of the day, a big part of what we do beyond the construction is property management firms we work with, making sure our condo mm -hmm. documents are solid in terms of reserve allowances for repairs and maintenance. These, you know, there be in this in these two buildings specifically, there could be 700 plus people living in this building exactly. on a daily basis. Yeah. So we're very thoughtful in terms of, I guess, the construction. But then after we turn this building over, you know, a big our legacy is still connected to in a big way. So we want to make sure that they're managed well and. Um, there's the appropriate funds to, to, to maintain these buildings. Oh, I really appreciate that. So thank you for answering that without me having to ask it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for your questions. Um, Councillor Davey. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, just a quick question if I could. The, you say that there's a one, two, and three bedroom units. Can you break down that number at all for us in terms of the... Yeah, for sure. So approximately 30% of our units are traditional one bedrooms. Another 60% are about our one bedrooms and dens. And the remaining, call it 10-ish percent, are twos. And then we have a handful of threes. Right now there's approximately or around 12 proposed in the development. Um, the reality is we're still you know, actively trying to figure out how three bedroom units can work, functionally work in these type of uh, high rise developments um, in terms of square footage, making them you know, economically affordable and um, you know, it's in like and functional space. So we're, we're approximately 12 are currently in the development and we'll look to streamline that as we go through further design development. Okay, so, and yeah, actually that's helpful. So only 30% will be traditional one bedroom. Yeah, and, yeah. and we're, you know, we're reacting to the market. Work from home, again, Garment Street and Charlie, there are a lot of people that are we're up living out of these buildings and working out of them all day long. So trying to, uh, you know, design these spaces so that they're truly functional and livable is, um, higher and higher priority for us on a daily basis to, to, to our architecture and firms that are working on these for us. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I had a couple questions. Uh, going back to the, the one bedroom apartments, what's the floor space in a, in a one bedroom? Uh, one bedroom unit nowadays is around 500 to 550 square feet. Okay, and are you contemplating any affordable condos or units in the, in the building? Well, so what Zara Group has done traditionally is a donation to a local affordable housing provider. At this development, we're proposing 370 or 350,000 square, uh, $350,000 dollars. Um, it will go to one of the many local providers of affordable housing. Our opinion is, is that um, they can utilize that money to do more than what we can with it, and they're, that's their specialty. They, to be honest, do it better than we would. And uh, we, we know by working relatively close with a lot of the local firms, um, Beyond Housing as an example, that uh, they have access to projects, but access to capital is um, always complicated. So we look to try to you know, work with them through donations to allow them to do what they do well, while we try to do what we do well. Okay, thank you. There are no more questions, so thank you for, for coming tonight. Um, are there any questions for staff? 
No questions? Okay, we have a mover. Councillor Snyder, did you? Oh, comments? Thanks for this. I think it's in a great area, close to a lot of amenities, close to Fairview Park Mall, close to medical offices, uh, shopping, groceries, um, and, and it's a great use of space as we try to build up and not out. So appreciate that, and again, happy to move this. Okay, thank you. Um, so the motion reads that official plan amendment application OPA 21007 WBB for MKG Holding Corporation requesting a land use designation change from commercial to mixed use to permit a mixed use development on the land specified and illustrated on Schedule A be adopted in the form shown in the official plan amendment attachment attached as attachment A and accordingly forwarded to the Region of Waterloo for approval and that zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 21010 WBB for MKG Holding Corporation be approved in the form shown in the proposed bylaw and map number one as attachment B is attached and further that the urban design brief prepared by GSP Group Inc. dated March 2023 and attached as attachment C be endorsed and staff be directed to implement the urban design brief through future site plan approval processes. All those in favour? Opposed? And that passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so the second um, item is regarding official plan amendment and zone, zoning bylaw amendments for 1770 King Street East, 815 and 825 Weber Street East. So we'll start first with the five minute presentation from Mr. Dumart, Craig Dumart, the senior planner. Whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Thank you, and good evening, members of the committee. Uh, before you is a zoning bylaw amendment and official plan, amendment, official plan amendment application for the subject properties located at 1770, 815, and 825 Weaver Street East, proposing a 27-story multiple dwelling development with 503 dwelling units. Staff is recommending approval of the applications. The proposed development includes a consolidation of three properties addressed as 1770 King Street East, 815 and 825 Weaver Street East. The consolidated parcels front onto Montgomery Road, Weaver Street East and King Street East. The subject lands are all currently developed with commercial plazas and surface parking. Commercial uses are located directly beside the subject lands, which also have frontages along Weaver and King Street and the corner parcel uh, located along Montgomery Road in King Street East um, is also developed with the commercial plaza. However, it is not within the development that's proposed this evening. King Street East, uh, the Rockway Gardens and a landscape buffer to the south provide a buffer to the nearby single detached, semi detached and multiple dwellings located along Floral Crescent. Uh, to the east is Highway 8 on and off ramps and directly to the north of the subject properties is Eastwood Cleveland Secondary School and Montgomery Park. The subject lands are identified as an urban corridor in the City of Kitchener's urban structure and urban corridors are identified as primary intensification areas. So this stretch along King Street and Weaver Street is an urban corridor and it's an area um, of expected change. So intensification will incur in urban corridors in order to preserve uh, the yellow areas, which are community areas and the city of Kitchener's urban structure. And the urban areas, or the community areas, sorry, are where most people live in low rise and low density buildings. And we don't anticipate major changes in the community areas and rather the primary intensification and redevelopment will incur in the urban corridors. So the subject lands and all the adjacent lands uh, along King Street East in this neighborhood are designated as mixed use corridor uh, and the King Street East uh, neighborhood secondary plan. And mixed use corridors, they provide residential redevelopment opportunities together with appropriate commercial and institutional uses. So the existing land use designation, it permits a maximum floor space ratio of four and it can be increased to up to five if it's uh, developed with a food store and there is no maximum building height for the land's designated mixed-use corridor. So the planned vision for the subject lands and the surrounding King Street East lands is for a high-intensity mixed-use uh, development. 
The subject lands are also currently zoned high intensity mixed use corridor zone uh, in the zoning bylaw 851 and the current zoning implements the official plan and again it permits multiple dwellings, um, a range of commercial institutional uses and permits a maximum floor space ratio of four. There is no maximum building height under the City of Kitchener's existing zoning regulations and the current zoning bylaw requires one parking space per dwelling unit over 51 square meters and 0.165 parking spaces for dwelling units having a floor area of less than 51 square meters which is capped at 40% of the units. So to facilitate the proposed multiple dwelling, um, the owner is proposing to change the official plan designation from mixed use corridor with special policy area 1 to mixed use corridor with special policy area 11 in the King Street East secondary plan and special policy area 11 will allow for a floor space ratio of six. And to implement the special policy area, the applicant is proposing to change the zoning from high intensity mixed use corridor zone with special use provision 401U to high intensity mixed use corridor zone with special regulation provision 790R and holding provision 102H in zoning by 851. Special Regulation 790R will allow for the increased floor space ratio of 6, require a parking ratio of 0.58 spaces per unit, and it will require a 16-meter landscape buffer to screen parking along King Street. The subject lands are the gateway to the city's downtown coming from Highway 8, and a high level of urban design is expected for the redevelopment of the subject lands. As such, a holding provision, 102H, is required for an updated urban design brief, uh, which will be reviewed and implemented through the site plan process. As well, the holding provision will require remediation of site contamination and an updated noise study. So before you is the concept site plan for the proposed development showing a 27-story multiple dwelling building. The building and the massing is oriented along Weaver Street and Montgomery Road. Landscape the amenity area is proposed along King Street East. Uh, which again screens 21 surface visitor parking spaces. The primary vehicular access is located off of Weaver Street and a secondary right-in and right-out access is proposed off of King Street East. 503 residential units are proposed including 335 one-bedroom units and 168 two-bedroom units. None of these units meet the threshold to be defined as affordable dwelling units and rather the proposed development will bring to market 503 purpose-built rental units, which is a more affordable type of housing than purchasing a home. The development proposes 291 parking spaces, 396 Class A bicycle parking spaces, and 10 Class B outdoor bicycle spaces, along with 58 EV-ready parking stalls. This rendering here shows the building massing perspective from King Street East. The 27-story tower is situated at the corner of Weaver and Montgomery Road and steps down to 17 floors and is defined with an eight-story podium. The Weaver Street and Montgomery Road frontages are activated by at-grade residential units in the building's lobbies. Balconies for the residential units are included on all street-facing elevations and 4.5-meter tall ground floor units are proposed uh, which will enhance the streetscape and allow for easy conversion of future non-residential uses. So this development here proposes an opportunity and it presents an opportunity to redevelop an underutilized parcel of land with a new multiple dwelling development that aligns with the City of Kitchener's official plan. There's an opportunity here to increase housing supply with purpose-built rentals in an intensification corridor and to introduce a new compatible building form in a neighborhood with high quality urban design at the gateway to the city's downtown. Furthermore, this development will also offer an opportunity to diversify housing stock and provide additional housing choices in the community. Staff are supportive of the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment and are recommending approval. The proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment are consistent with policies of the provincial policy statement, conform to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, Region official plan, City of Kitchener official plan, and represent good, uh, good planning and are in the public interest. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, Councillor Michaud, can we wait till after the? Yeah, okay. So, our first delegation then is um, Nicolette Van Oyen from MHBC Planning, 
and you have five minutes for your, to make your presentation. And P Pierre Ch um, Chauvin, also from MHBC, is available virtual if there are any questions for him as well. Good evening, Chair, Mayor, and members of committee. My name is Nicolette Van Ooyen. I'm with MHBC Planning here on behalf of my client, Stephen Litt of Vive Developments. And uh, as Craig has gone through, uh, we have a development proposal for 1770 King Street East, 815 and 825 Weber Street East for 503 dwelling units. The neighborhood context, we are um, within about a kilometer of the Borden Street LRT station. We've got um, a very comprehensive neighborhood uh, consisting of schools, retail development, um, parks. So it's a very comprehensive uh, area with um, very little low residential, low density residential within close proximity. So we are proposing uh, a podium of eight stories along with um, a tower that contains 17 stories and then a 27 story tower at the corner of Weber and Montgomery Road. The project is um, focused on Weber, the Weber Street frontage and with an outdoor amenity area space located at the um, frontage of King Street. Uh, so a total of 503 units in total with 291 parking spaces provided in two stories of underground parking. Secure bicycle parking will also be provided and a loading space is also provided. There's also common amenity area space on the eighth floor podium structure. The architectural rendering illustrates um, good use of urban design techniques and uh, will be an attractive feature at this prominent intersection close to the for, um, Highway 8 interchange. Another elevation that was already provided by Craig. And this is looking from Montgomery Street. So you can see that a portion of the property is used for private amenity space as well. Shadow studies were completed with very little to no impact on uh, low, re low rise residential development within the neighborhood. Um, this is the spring equinox season uh, and this is the summer equinox season. Thank you and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, Councillor Michaud, did you have a question? I, sorry, I took you out of the queue. Okay, so, um, Mayor Vanipet? Okay, well, there's, is, um, are you going to be presenting, Mr. Litt? Oh, just for questions. Okay, so then questions to the delegates. Go ahead. Councillor Michaud. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure who this can be directed to, probably anybody. I didn't. Sure. It's not mixed use, so there's no retail in this development. That's correct. Now, is this development taking away some of the retail that is uh, currently there, commercial, on that corner? Yes, correct? they, they will have to be um, relocated. Yeah. So, it, it, my concern is that we're putting in another 500 people in that area. We've got a high school and we're taking a big chunk of, of commercial real estate out of that. So what? So all you've got is a corner with, with really nothing but people and, and no, no amenities. Um, I mean, you've got Rockway uh, Gardens, but there's no commercial uh, walkability to any um, plaza, restaurant, service. Right now, they've got that little plaza in there. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering why we, you, you didn't um, think of maybe doing a, a, a mixed use because it is, it could, you could have done mixed use there, right, and have a something on the yeah, it's, of it's it. not, it's not required in the zoning. No, I understand that, but yeah. I'm just wondering if, to, in order, in order to create a, a nice community for people that are living there. Tag team this. Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, um, there's 11 units that wrap around the corner of King and Montgomery. 
re retail is, is a, a, you know, understanding there's retailer now and it functions. Um, the billings are old and there's all kinds of challenges with them. Um, notwithstanding that, if, you know, once that building gets built in a few days in the area, I think that that will justify some, some more of that. So that main floor will be designed five meters floor to floor so that when and if and even during construction it becomes viable, then we can make those units, they're convertible into, uh, into retail units. So approximately the same size as what's there today. So, so you don't normally just do that as a part of the plan? You want uh, to see it as like a building? It's, it's a very good question. So it, it sort of at this high level stage where we're just approving parking ratios, height, stepping, all that sort of thing. We don't really, pro we can't program to see if there's a market for that for retail in that spot right now. I can tell you right now, like at um, 3D at King Street, King and Cedar Street, we've got two retail units of a cool local sushi restaurant and Portuguese barbecue. Works. So I'm, I'm positive that by the time this building comes to fruition, that uh, hopefully it's the same situation here. So. so you change it as you go then? Right now it's not mixed use, so you can change. Maybe this is for staff. He can change yeah. it to, to mixed use whenever, whenever. Is that how that works? Uh, through the chair, uh, commercial uses are permitted. However, to allow for commercial and residential uses both be located um, on the main floor, a site-specific provision would be required. Um, a similar approach was taken to the nearby development um, at the former Schwaben, Schwaben Club development. Okay, so would, it, would, a site, would that happen now? Could that happen now to have to, to put commercial into this place so, so we know there's going to be something there? Because right now, sure. if that yeah. development goes, there's nothing on that corner except for people and more students and, yep. and uh, it's kind That's of taking... Point for sure. Yeah. Okay, I would like to recommend that. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your questions and your comments. Yeah, can I can I make make a motion to move to have a site specific? Sorry. Certainly. Amendment. Should we come back to the the motion later? Yes, amend. I want to amend amend the the motion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe you should. What you should do is give the written motion amendment to to um, the clerk, and then we'll come back and, and vote on that later. Sure. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Mayor Bovanovic? Well, thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Councillor Michaud, for, uh, for raising this issue because this was a, a concern of mine as well. Sure. Um, I, I drive by this location on a daily basis um, as, I, uh, as I go to work, um, and I know how much those businesses are utilized by the students, and then when I think of the number of units that are being approved here, plus the number of units that will be on the former Schwaben Club site, um, not to mention the existing neighborhood, where really there isn't a lot um, of neighborhood-specific uses um, nearby. Really, when you, th when you think about it, um, you've got to get up, you either got to get down to Highway Market uh, area, yeah. high, well, Zaris Highway Market, it's or I'm, I'm aging myself here, <laughs> or, um, <laughs> or you've got to get... Um, the other direction to sort of King and Ottawa. Um, and so I, I think it is really important. And so I would actually, I mean, I, I would encourage, I, I guess, a, a mixed, um, the kind of provision that's being talked about would cover it off. But I, I would really encourage the developer to explore how that can be more of a, of a given as opposed to an optional. Um, as we go forward with this project, uh, particularly with its location being on the uh, on the corner, unlike the uh, the Schwaben, which is which is mid block, or the former Schwaben, which is mid block. So I think it'll it'll better sort of meet uh, the various community needs. The other piece, um, and I don't know if this is a question for the delegation or for staff, um, but with the parkette that's being proposed that'll be on the King Street frontage. I know one of the things that we've you know, regularly talked about, and while it's not the corner piece, is how we um, do a better job of, of the entrance point into the city uh, and into the, 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 the central part of the city. And so as part of the site plan approval process, 
could staff work with the developer to explore how that can be integrated with Rockway on one site, the park amenity on the other, and, and the boulevard in the middle to make for a better uh, overall entrance experience for users coming into the city. Wondering if staff can comment on that. Through the chair, uh, yes, that is something staff can work with the developer on. Um, in fact, that would be part of the uh, hold-in provision that has to be satisfied requiring an updated urban design brief, um, which requires enhancement to um, the public realm, on-site amenity, and building design. So yes, something we can definitely work with them on. Okay, sounds good. And then I guess just going with that, and I, I like some of the things I've certainly seen in the, in the drawings um, here, but I would, um, I guess, just emphasize uh, to, to both of you, Mr. Litton and, uh, and MHBC as the consultant, um, from an urban design point of view as you work on that document, I think it is really important that you know this is a kind of a, a statement entry point into the into the city and and so if the urban design can can reflect that I, I get that there's you know certain financial realities but uh, I think it's really really important and as a, as a company that you know has uh, or will have extensive holdings in the city I think it it'll be an important reflection on 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 Vive's overall uh, assets in the in the community. For sure, agreed. Wonderful. Um, that would that would be all my questions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have Councillor Dino. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, quite often we're, we're we're talking about displacement. We're talking about home, um, renters being displaced. And not, I don't think we have had a conversation about businesses and the the owners of those businesses being displaced. Um, and so I, I want to thank uh, Councillor Michaud for bringing this up um, because it is important to know where these businesses are going to go. And so maybe staff can answer this, or Mr. Lee, maybe you can answer this. Is it a normal pro, uh, process to approach the if there are businesses that are being being removed um, to Talk to them about relocation. I know sometimes we, talk, you know, homeowners or uh, landlords will talk about renters relocation. Do, is that something we normally do with businesses? Yeah, I mean, our hope is that um, this project isn't in, like isn't going to be built tomorrow, right? So, yep. um, you know, the tenants in there they have commercial leases. There's end dates. It's, you know, it's um, it's not affecting the roof over someone's head, but absolutely their livelihood. Understand that the idea is that. Um, one of the other projects we built first, probably two at a time in this neighborhood, and then the buildings are up, and obviously you can see the space and, and offer some sort of transition to move over, right? Keep them in the community. That's the hope. Yeah. Um, at this point, yeah, we just sort of wait out leases, and we just try and give people as much notice as, as possible, respecting their livelihood. So. Yeah, and, yeah, and I understand that. You know, I think, I think the sentiment and uh, Councilor Michaud and, and and the mayor, met, you know, said that they would love to to see some of those businesses stay in that area. For sure. Um, you know, I've, my barber is in that area. My barber yeah. is in there. Um, you know, and so, and I, I frequent a couple of the food places. And so, you know, yeah. okay. um, it'd be great. And I think it, it, it's perfect opportunity for the surrounding areas to, uh, for sure. to be able to locate or access those same places. Um, so hopefully you can yep. give that some consideration. Understood. Thank yep. Thank you. Um, Councillor Clancy. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up displacement. <laughs> um, this is a theme you might have noticed, and I hope that you're taking notes so that you can just get ahead of it next time. Yep. Um, we just heard from a, a developer recently who donated some money. I just wondered if that's something uh, you'll consider in terms of affordable housing. Like, don't get me wrong, I know we need rental apartments yeah. for sure, but we also need affordable rental apartments. I know that it doesn't always fit the project, but yeah. is there some response you can... Yeah, we've given that some thought, without a doubt. Um, I don't think this is the one for it. Um, I think what we can commit to today is that, that, that you know, retail anchoring the corner, those units, apartments there now, we could commit to those being retail. Um, as a contribution to activate that streetscape. At this corner, through the detailed design process, it's going to be quite enhanced. It's, it's, a, it's a very uh, vibrant, obvious corner coming in and out of the highway off 7-8. So 
this isn't going to be the one, I don't think, unfortunately, for us to go deeply affordable on. As you know, uh, when and when we can, um, we do, but this is simply not the one. The, the building is going to be mid-market rental. And by that very nature, we believe that's a, a very strong community benefit. So. And would you consider a contribution like the form the previous planning and developer made committed to? I, not on this one, unfortunately. I, I just know um, the site logistics, the underground parking, the enhanced design, the building stepping. It's there's going to be some architectural uh, interest in this building, and I think the mid market's probably the the real value add to our neighborhood and, and Kitchener as a whole. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Mayor Vanovic. Did you have a question for staff or for the proponent? Actually, yeah. Thank you. Just actually one more thing that came up. Um, when I look at the um, the makeup. There's one bedroom units and two bedroom units um, there. Um, and I guess I'm just wondering whether or not there's been some thought into some three bedroom units. And, and I say that because we've got a senior elementary public school within walking distance of that location. We have a high school across the street mm -hmm. and we have an elementary school not that far away. Um, and so, quite frankly, it becomes a good place for, for families, potentially. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's been any, any thought to that. And if there hasn't been, can there be between now and yeah. Council Day? <laughs> yeah, the three bedroom, I think, uh, I don't know the ratio offhand of the two bedroom plus dens, which really function as sort of the three bedroom layout. Um, we, I think we talked about this at length at the Schwaben Club project. Um, you know, there's been for, for decades, 50 plus years, there's been suburban development in Kitchener, all of which is, you know, probably, not, I'm, I'm guessing, 95% three bedroom, right? If the, the deep need is definitely one and two bedrooms, transit oriented core areas. This being, yes, I realize it's sort of sitting on the highway, but the LRT stop's not far away. So, I don't know if this is the best spot for three bedroom accommodation. It's very difficult. I'm sure council's heard that, or committee's heard this before about three bedrooms in, in uh, you know, boxes in the sky are difficult to accommodate. So, we can go back and look and see if we can do some three bedrooms. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, I'd, I'd be interested in, in, I guess, getting some information on that when it comes back um, to council, um, including what the the plans may have been for the Schwaben because I think you know we can look at it in that together context. Um, but but mm -hmm. do I, I just think with the proximity to the schools, both within very close walking distance, um, it it would be a shame to to not capitalize on that. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, good. No more questions, Councillor Clancy. Did you have another question? No. Um, I had a question about the um, the shadow study. Um, so I actually went to a Google map. I had to pull a map out of the cupboard at home to get north, south, east, west, right? But nice. when I look at the shadow study, it looks like it, the sun is coming from the south and hitting the building and going that way, rather than coming from the east and, and carrying a shadow that way and then this way. So I, I'm, I'm just a bit confused about it. The, the full shadow study is provided as part of the planning justification report. So, um, yeah, and, and I know King and Weber, like it's always confusing the way they go east, west, or north, south, but um, should be accurately reflected in that. Okay, um, maybe you can just confirm that at, when it sure. comes back to council. Um, and my concern, I, the reason I raised this is because of Rockway Gardens, which is right there, and I know this is a concern both with the, the Schwaben Club building and, and now this development site and the impact that it might have on, on the gardens. So. Yeah, the primary shadow is on the highway, a little bit on the Montgomery. Uh, if you look at the, you can pull up the shadow study and look, but I believe right. it to be very minimal the impact. So. Okay. Yep. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about or ask about is the um, traffic. So we've got uh, developments on Ottawa Street, Weber Street, King Street. That whole area is, is getting developed and. Um, residents have expressed concerns already with the, the traffic in that area. So, 
I don't know, do you have any um, comments or thoughts on how, you know, things can be kept at a minimum? Yeah, we, our transportation consultant Paradigm has done a study and, and looks at what's being built, planning applications, you know, as much future forward looking as humanly possible. And I think uh, the best way to put an end to traffic is just to stop driving cars and ride bikes and walk and such. So, you know, the parking count's already low, and I think staff can maybe comment on uh, the, you know, the, their review of the transportation study. Okay, and my final question, what is the size of the outdoor amenity space? Don't know that offhand. Okay. Um, you can look. That's fine, if you can get it to us later. So those are all the questions. Can I have somebody to, um, or have questions for staff, I guess, first. Councillor Snyder? Uh, just one more question. I don't know if the staff or or you, Mr. Litt, do, do we know how much retail could be put on a, a ground floor? Yeah, I, I saw this, I could see the discussion. So there's, there's, there's 11 units that rack the corner. The average unit size is probably 700 square feet. And that's my experience, to, that's very similar in what the size that's there today. So those would convert quite easily into, into retail suites, so. Okay. Okay, so possible 11. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have a mover? Um, Mayor Vanovich? Move it with follow up information requested coming back for Council Day. Okay. Like it's moved, but just noting that. You, you, you're going to add some items not, that you. Are no, I'm not going to. I mean, I think staff have noted it, and okay. I presume that'll come back for, for Council Day, but I'll move it in, in its present form with whatever amendment uh, Councillor Michaud has. Okay, do you want to go ahead with the amendment? Yes, I, I may. Uh, I may choose to hopefully represent Councillor Michaud's uh, um, revision. So I think what I heard the discussion uh, was direct staff to look at uh, three provisions. I think which would allow for commercial and residential on the ground floor. Uh, one of them would be a provision to uh, require the minimum interior ceiling height for ground floor to be 4.5 meters. So that allows for the transition and make sure that the interior ceiling height is sufficient for non-residential uses. Uh, that we would need a provision to say dwelling units shall be permitted to be located on the ground floor with non-residential uses. So that allows for a mix of uses on the ground floor. Right now it's one or the other. So we would need that provision to allow for both. And then thirdly, I think we would want to regulate the minimum min uh, lot area, sorry, the minimum gross floor area for non-residential uh, uses. So I, if that is what you are looking to do to have a mixed use building, I would recommend that those three provisions be included in the bylaw. Yeah, I, I, what I'm looking for is the ground floor to be commercial. So is that basically all, all that you just said there? Can just That would allow for a mix of both residential and commercial. But there's no guarantee it's going to be commercial then. Because it could, it could turn into residential unless we can... My, my interpretation of this was to ensure that this building isn't going to be just turned into all residential and there'll be no commercial uh, um, uh, places for any of the people that are, li are living or visiting in that area. So I'm asking for a ground floor, floor commercial. Is that? Yes. What I would recommend uh, with the three approach, so the one is you get the ceiling height. Second one that you allow for both on the ground floor so we don't have to come to a number now. And thirdly, have a minimum non-residential floor area on the ground floor, which would mean there would have to be non-residential uses, which in essence is commercial. It seems kind of vague to me, but okay. No? Okay. Sure. But I, I just have a question about that. What would the minimum be? Uh, through you, Councillor. Of non-residential. Chair. So, uh, Councillor Snyder had asked. I don't know that we would have that answer. It may be something that uh, we should take a look at the floor plans and report back to Council based on uh, Mr. Litt's uh, suggestion that 11 units at about 700 square feet is about 715 square meters. But I would respectfully ask if we can have some time to take that away and we'd be able to report back before council. Is that, is that okay? 
Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, first, any um, comments before we, we get to voting on the, on the motion and the, the amendment? Councillor Clancy? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Like, I, I know because of Bill 23, um, our parkland dedication amount went down to 20% of its original amount. So, just recognizing the impact that has on our on our ability to make parks available as we grow up. I know that's a concern of local residents, so you know any contribution you can make. Our Montgomery Park is quite old and tired, and with the influx of triple the population of this this uh, postal code, you know, um, not just on this one. I'm recognizing the surrounding towers. You know that will that's a concern of residents, and I think the, that we're seeing the impacts. Of Bill 23 in this project and the, the limit limitations of funding to our parks. Okay, okay thank you. Um, Councillor Ioannidis? Yeah, thank you. Uh, just, uh, I think, were comments there? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. I just, just want to thank the proponent for uh, bringing this forward and, uh, you know, being uh, amenable to having commercial space and, and wanting to work with the uh, with, with committee on, on uh, uh, you know, making a quality space for all of the area residents. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to when this comes through, I wouldn't mind seeing like the design of this because it is, as the mayor suggested, uh, kind of like the entrance point into the city, basically. So uh, I would really love to see, love to see that uh, enhancement and, I, and look forward to it. Cool. Okay, thank you. No more comments? So we'll go, yes. I'll make one comment. Um, 64 Margaret, uh, Margaret Victoria, that's under construction now. It's like five floors, it goes to six. Drive by that if you come in the other sort of way in Kitchener. That's the same, it has four and a half meter uh, floor to floor height. It's mixed use, it, you know, hopefully someday Victoria Street narrows and becomes pedestrian and all that. But those are residential now, but they're being designed so that in the future they could go commercial. So the idea here was was similar flexibility, but we're good committing to retail. So anyway, okay. I digress. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you'll come back with more details on that at um, the council meeting, right? For sure. So thank you. That's, I think, all the questions we have. So thank you for your presentations. Um, we'll go first to the amendment. Can that be put up on the screen by someone? No? the chair. I uh, am not a planner. I apologize. I tried to capture it as quickly as possible. Um, so Garrett will provide some additional wording after the fact. So it addressed the minimum ceiling heights, the dwelling units located on the ground floor, and a minimum of non-residential uh, gross ground floor area. So uh, it captured the essence of the, but the wording will need to be expanded and edited. Okay. Is that a good place to start it? Did you want to add something? Yeah, we can save it for council, but I think we should pass this today um, and then make adjustments on it between now and then. All right, so all those in favor of the amendment? That passes. And um, the motion um, that the official plan amendment application APO OPA 23002 KCD for King Weber K Kitchener Holdings Inc. Requesting a land use designation change from mixed use corridor with special policy area one to mixed use corridor with special policy area 11 to permit a 27 story multiple dwelling development on the land specified and illustrated on schedule A be adopted in the form shown in the official plan amendment attached to report DSD 2023 163 as appendix A and accordingly afforded to the Region of Waterloo for approval and that zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 23005 KCD for King Weber Kitchener Holdings Inc. be approved in the form shown in the proposed bylaw and map number one attached to report DSD 2023-163 as appendix B. All those in favor? Through the chair. Sorry. 
Apologies. I think Garrett Stevenson. Thank you for the interruption, Councillor. Uh, I just want to clarify, because that was an amendment and not direction to staff, it would be appropriate to include a waiver of public notice for amending the bylaw. So uh, I would ask that you include the following provision as part of that recommendation, that pursuant to section 3417 of the Planning Act, as amended, further notice is not required to be given in respect to zoning bylaw amendment ZBA 23005KCD. <laughs> so, so this is an amendment, right? So we should vote on it now. No, that was your original motion. Okay, so we've already voted on it, and that wording will be corrected in the in the minutes, will it? And and it will come back to us at council. All right, <laughs> sounds good. So, all those in favor? Opposed? And that carries. And that's it there. Yes. Well, Madam Chair, since I did come in uh, late um, and was not here for item 6.1, I do want to declare that I have a pecuniary conflict of interest under in the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act um, pertaining to item 6.1 due to the fact that my residence is within the circulation zone of the property in question. Okay, so you. But I wasn't here anyway for it. You'll submit the, the relevant documents. Um, thank you. Um, so that's the end. Could I have somebody move an adjournment? Councillor Snyder, all those in favor? And thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs>